Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where the past comes alive with facts, anecdotes, and a dash of humor. Here are your hosts, Chuck and Marco. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another fascinating episode of the History AI Podcast. I'm your host, Chuck. And I'm Marco. Today, we're diving into the thrilling life of a man who believed that any officer who goes into action without his sword is improperly dressed. Lieutenant Colonel John Malcolm Thorpe Fleming Churchill, better known as Mad Jack Churchill. Quite a mouthful of a name for a man with such a larger-than-life personality. You're telling me. The guy carried a longbow and a broadsword into battle during World War II. If that doesn't grab your attention, I don't know what will. I can't even get my son to carry his own groceries, let alone a broadsword. But let's start at the beginning. Born in 1906 in Hong Kong, Mad Jack was part of a family with a deep-set history in public service. His father, Alec Fleming Churchill, was the director of public works in Hong Kong. From what I gather, traveling was in their blood right? They moved from Hong Kong to England and then spent some of their time in Surrey, the Isle of Man, and even attended the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst. Precisely. His family's dedication to serving their country was likely a driving force for Jack to enter the military. However, before joining the army, he showcased multiple talents, including playing the bagpipes. I tried the bagpipes once. Let's just say the neighbors weren't fans. Maybe leave the bagpiping to the Scots and Jack Churchill. But before the war, Churchill wasn't just honing his musical skills. He had a rather adventurous life. He worked as a newspaper editor, a male model, and even acted in a couple of films. You mean to tell me the same man who would go on to shoot Nazis with a longbow was also strutting his stuff on the catwalk? Talk about range. Literally and figuratively. But when World War II was on the horizon, Churchill's adventurous spirit led him to re-enlist in the British Army. There's a sense that he truly believed in the importance of fighting for freedom and against tyranny. And while most soldiers were picking up rifles, Churchill chose the sword, bagpipes, and longbow, claiming they were more personal weapons. Talk about making a personal statement. Churchill's service record reads like an action-packed thriller. Let's dive deeper into the significant battles he participated in during World War II. Let's start with the Battle of Dunkirk in 1940. While the mass evacuation of Allied soldiers from the beaches of Dunkirk is itself a tale of valor, Churchill's personal story stands out. He's famously known to have signaled the start of a raid by playing March of the Cameron Men on his bagpipes, then, believe it or not, throwing a grenade and charging into battle with his broadsword. He embodied the spirit of fighting till the end. But Dunkirk wasn't his only claim to fame. Let's talk about his time in Norway in 1941. Ah yes, the Vagso raid. Churchill's commandos were tasked with a raid on the German garrison there. And in what might seem straight out of a movie, Churchill leapt into action, playing his bagpipes once more before launching a grenade and charging with his sword. The sheer audacity of his attack caught the Germans off guard. And, most notably, during this raid, he became the last British soldier to record a confirmed kill with a longbow in action. It's like mixing medieval warfare with modern tactics. Indeed. And then there's Italy, 1943. Churchill and a small group of commandos captured a German observation post in Salerno, taking 42 prisoners. And all this with just his broadsword, a few men, and the element of surprise. For his remarkable bravery, Churchill was awarded the military cross and bar. Churchill believed in shock and awe, and his audacious tactics certainly left an impression on both his allies and his enemies. His leadership and unorthodox methods made him a legend among the allies. Churchill was the kind of soldier who didn't just participate in battles, he shaped them. But before we dive into his life post-war, a word from our sponsor. From the mind behind the History AI podcast comes an electrifying journey into the past. A ripple through time, Franklin's folly. Dive into a tale where Benjamin Franklin, America's beloved inventor, takes an unexpected journey through time. But with his leap, he unleashes a powerful ripple. Now, with dark forces lurking in the shadows, harnessing this energy to shatter and enslave the world, it's a race against time. Will Franklin fix the future? Or will history rewrite itself? Uncover the secrets. A ripple through time, Franklin's folly. Time has never been more fragile. On Amazon presale now, Churchill's post-war life was just as riveting as his wartime adventures. 
this man didn't know the meaning of the word retire. Oh, absolutely. Let's first talk about his stint in the Far East. After World War II, Churchill was sent to Burma, where he anticipated a new mission against the Japanese. But by the time he arrived, the atomic bombs had been dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, effectively ending the war. Undeterred, he's quoted as saying, if it wasn't for those damn Yanks, we could have kept the war going for another ten years. That's classic Mad Jack for you. But even in peacetime, he sought out new challenges. After returning to England, he didn't just take up gardening or fishing like most retirees. No, he picked up a whole new sport. Surfing. In the 1950s, Churchill became a devoted surfer. He's even credited as one of the first men to ride the five-foot tidal bore on the River Severn using a board he designed himself. But his adventures on water didn't stop there. Right you are. He took on a grand expedition, a 1,500-mile journey down the Mississippi River, paddling a canoe. A testament to his undying spirit of exploration and adventure. And let's not forget his tenure as an instructor at the Land Air Warfare School in Australia, where he became a well-respected figure, inspiring many with his tales of bravery and resilience. Churchill truly embodied the idea that life doesn't stop after service or after retirement. Every day was an opportunity for a new adventure, a new story and he lived every moment to the fullest. Churchill's life teaches us the importance of living life to the fullest, being unapologetically yourself, and standing up for what you believe in. And perhaps the value of carrying a sword from time to time? Only if you're Mad Jack Churchill. So, as we wrap up this episode, we want to thank all our listeners for joining us on this exhilarating journey into the life of Mad Jack Churchill. If you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe, rate, and share our podcast with your history-loving friends. Until next time, keep exploring, and remember, any podcast episode without a good joke is improperly dressed. Well said Chuck. Until next time.